Huh, how the heck is that in there? Oh, there it's starting to move. Okay, there we go. Man, that sucker was in there. So I picked up this 27D mini excavator a couple of months ago. I'd been searching for a while, looking at a bunch of different models. The only thing it was missing was a thumb. Uh, the hours were super low. It's got 500 hours on it. And a D is kind of an older machine. I think it's 2015 or something like that. And so uh, figuring I'd rather deal with buying a thumb and adding that on rather than dealing with a worn out machine, I'll take the bet. And so I've been pretty happy with it so far. It's been really nice. I've, this is the first time I've had a mini excavator. The bigger machine that we've got here is the 135, which is like a 33,000 pound machine. And this one runs right around, uh, I think about 6,500 pounds. So today we're gonna be putting this thumb on here. I picked this up from Aux uh, Attachments on eBay and it includes the thumb, the cylinder, the hoses, the quick disconnects, the fittings, everything. And so, oh, and the pins too. And so all we've got to do is uh, just mount it on there, throw the pin in, uh, put the cylinder on, connect them up to the uh, quick disconnects on the auxiliary hydraulic here, and it should be pretty easy. For a minute there, I thought I'd have to do something about this Zerk fitting, but it looks like it just clears the little bracket here, so I think I'll leave it alone. Well, that's not what I wanted to see. Looks like the cylinder is out of alignment with the thumb. And even if I try to move the thumb, it doesn't really want to align. I think the problem is this bracket has been smashed a few times by, I don't know what, I'm not sure why it would be all banged up up here, but it's a little banged up and it's mushroomed out here. And the cylinder is not able to come over as far as it could. So I think I'll start by pulling this pin back off and then grinding that out. I probably should have left this cotter pin uh, unbent before <laughs> before I uh, finished the project, just in case I needed to pull it back off. Oh well, sometimes that's how it goes. I don't know if you can see it there, but the edge is all chewed up looks like on both sides so I'll just take the grinder and knock that down real quick really love these battery operated tools this is a DeWalt and it seems like pretty much everything is going this direction just makes everything so much easier when you don't have to go dig out an extension cord That should do the trick.
Okay, round two. I'm not gonna pin that this time. I'll see first what happens down below. Huh, not happening. Okay, well, maybe the top of this cylinder isn't welded exactly straight, so I'll try uh, rotating at 180. Yep, looks like that fixed the problem. And not gonna be enough space to fit that guy in there, so we'll just throw it on the outside for later. So two of these, I think, go in these hydraulic couplers. So I suppose these other two are for the cylinder. It's always fun with pipe threads where you got a clock on a particular position. It's always a guessing game how far you're going to be able to get on the next turn. But I think we'll be okay here. Worst case scenario, you can always pull it out and throw some more, some more Teflon tape on it. Oh shoot, I'm going the wrong direction. I was actually supposed to be pointed up. Dang it. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll keep going. But it doesn't leak. Ugh. That should be good. This cylinder is designed to have a couple of different port options. They've got a, a sealed off port here. I guess they don't intend Ox doesn't intend you to use this one. And then you've got another one here and it's a double acting cylinder. So this one retracts the uh, shaft and then this one uh, pushes the shaft out. And then of course the port that we're gonna be using is it on the opposite side. Now that's because the excavator has the auxiliary hydraulic uh, connections, one on either side of the, of the uh, boom. And so uh, you run the line up on either side and that's why this one's plugged. In fact, I think possibly Ox might have added this port here. They just drilled it and added that so that you'd get uh, one on either side. That's probably good. All right, what do we got left here? So there's the hoses and then just the couplers. All right, hopefully those are long enough. Is that supposed to be routed through the hoop there? I don't know. I don't see any reason why why it would uh, get too tight if I did that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. And it looks like it's going to be long enough to get to the coupler there. I was a little nervous about that. I suppose they thought about it when they came up with the system.
I've had these leak before, so I really want to get this tight. All right, well, hopefully that did it. That should do it. Okay, so it looks like the male side's on this side. That's probably good. All right, connected. These quick couplers are all the rage these days, but sometimes they're a little finicky as far as getting them to join. Ah, okay, that one was a little tighter. Probably shouldn't have said that ahead of time. Well, it's in. I'll go ahead and try it out before I grease everything and wrap up. super fast acting. I wasn't expecting that. The big machine, it doesn't move anywhere near that fast. Although you can feather it, so that's nice. But then I didn't notice before, but there's actually a button underneath here that uh, seems to be used for the grip function. It's just on off only though. Whereas I can feather with the uh, thumb control. This machine's full of surprises, love it. I'm looking at this cylinder really closely and I'm seeing a hydraulic leak. Looks like right out of the weld where they added on this, uh, this bung. I'm pretty sure that they added this on like I was saying earlier. And it looks like their weld didn't quite make it because we got a tiny leak right there. And then I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like there's a tiny leak right there. So I'll have to fix this up myself. Dang. That's pretty dumb. Okay, well, I think I can probably fix it on the machine. I'll just grind that out and use the welder and MIG weld that up. I'll probably take care of it later on after it annoys me enough. Yeah, it looks like it's still leaking a little bit. It's hardly anything, but I think I'll email those guys over at Aux Attachments and see what they think about that.
All right, so that's a wrap for today. That went a little bit better than I expected, uh, other than the cylinder is welded a little bit crooked, and so I had to spin it around. Um, the thumb operates a lot faster than I'm used to. The big machine, it actually is a lot slower, the uh, 135. And so on this, man, it's lightning fast. I'm thankful that it's got a feather function on that uh, trigger, where the big machine is just on or off in either direction. This one, I can actually feather it, which is really nice. Um, I'll have to uh, maybe email uh, the uh, guys over at Aux to see what the deal is with that uh, leaking weld where they added on the bung. Um, either that or I'll just weld it up myself. And actually, I'll probably end up just welding it up myself. But I may shoot them an email anyway. Um, outside of that, man, that is so nice. You know, you operate with a thumb uh, for a while and I've been doing it with the big machine and then I got this guy and you know you feel like you're missing an arm and so boy that makes such a huge difference so nice you saw it grab those logs no problem this is a super lightweight machine so it's you know it's not going to be able to handle the big stuff like the uh the other excavator but for doing detail work and just cleaning up stuff man what a nice machine really a pleasure to work with well anyway so we'll go ahead and wrap it up for today if you guys are into this type of video, please subscribe and hit the like button. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching.